How's it going everybody? For today's beer review, we're going to be taking a look at Dogfish Head Brewery's 120 Minute Imperial IPA. So this is review number 120 and um, obviously I did this on purpose with the beer we're about to review. Now, uh, many of you may have noticed I didn't uh, really celebrate review number 100. In fact, it was actually a pretty crappy beer that we reviewed on number 100. But that's because I wanted review 120 to be the first really special, you know, big event review on the channel. That being said, I've been waiting for this review to come up for months now. Um, we are going to be talking about and reviewing Dogfish Head's 120 minute IPA. Now I'm sure many of you who are watching know the reputation that goes along with this beer, but for those of you who don't, this is considered to be one of the most, if not the most, potent, powerful, um, strong and large IPAs in existence. Um, just to read you the description on the bottle, it even says, What you have here is the holy grail for hop heads. This beer is continually hopped for over a 120 minute boil and then dry hopped for over a month. Enjoy now or age for a decade or so. Now as you know, Many IPAs you are not supposed to age because they lose their hop flavor. But if you notice on the label here, it says um, ages well. Right at the bottom. Right there. That is because the ABV of this beer is so potent and strong that it preserves the flavor. And this can be aged for years upon years. This will be a record for me as the absolute strongest beer I not only have drank on the channel, but just in my life, period. All official sources say this beer comes somewhere between an absolutely unrealistic fantasy level 18 to 20 percent alcohol by volume. The official website says it can be 20. For all intents and purposes, we'll say 19 percent. This is going to drink, supposedly, more like a fine brandy than it is to be a beer. There's a lot of controversy even that says, is this too extreme to even be considered a beer? We won't know until we try it. So, just so you guys know, these beers are almost always sold singularly like this. Um, this lone bottle here was about $10. And um, I have been so stoked and excited to try this beer. Um, I'm going to try to do an extremely in-depth review for this one simply because it's not something I'm going to get to drink every day so I kind of want to immortalize this moment in video. So I'm going to be doing it up all the way. I'm going to drinking out of my official Dogfish Head IPA glass. Um, if we've got that beer and we've got that glass, I think these two are meant for each other. I'm going to take the cap off carefully because this has a unique cap as you can see that's different from the other Dogfish Head IPA caps. Alright, the cap is off. I can smell it, the alcohol from here. Straight out of the bottle, it pours an extremely amazing looking, very hazy, golden caramel color. Straight down the center with a fairly aggressive pour, this forms about a half finger of kind of yellowish tan colored head. Um, I don't expect the head to stick around very long with the alcohol being so high. In the light, extremely murky, seems to be unfiltered, just beautiful amber, honey, orange, gold color as you can see. You couldn't ask for an Imperial IPA to look any better than that. Let's give it a smell. huge amounts of malt, oh my, there's so much going on with this. It's got caramel, notes of bourbon from just all the alcohol, brown sugar, hops, peaches, grapefruit, orange, mango, persimmon, papaya, tons of 
bright, um, sweet, tropical fruits that you expect from an Imperial IPA. But there's also just so much caramel, brown sugar, things like sweet brandy. It's very sweet. It's definitely a confectionery um, smell to it. It is not um, bitter smelling in the least bit. It's very, very hoppy, very sweet, and very tropical smelling. And the alcohol on that smell is crazy. So, it smells fantastic. Um, this is probably the, the only thing I can think of that smells similar to this, even coming close, is Dogfish Head's Burton Baton, and that's because it's a bourbon barrel aged IPA. So, we're going to give it the moment of truth now, give it a taste, and see if Dogfish Head 120 minute Imperial IPA lives up to the hype and the reputation that precedes it. Wow. There's so much alcohol in this beer. I've never experienced something like this before. Up front, sweet peaches, orange, caramel, and vanilla with a ridiculously huge amount of alcohol burn as it goes down. This is like a wintertime sipping beer. This is this is in a league of its own. It's hard to even consider it as an IPA. There's so much malt going on with this beer. I'm kind of at a loss for words right now because this is sort of in a classification of its own. It's it's hard to imagine that this is a beer. My chest is literally on fire right now. Um, this is similar to the way it feels to drink like a straight dram of scotch. I mean, it is hot. Very warming. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take one more sip here. I'm going to try to savor this because I've only got two left and I want to let those age. Give you the flavor development and then some closing words. sweet peach and hops fading into very warm brown sugar caramel molasses maple bourbon brandy and it does end just on a slightly bitter hoppy note that's not to say it's um, a super balanced beer though it is definitely sweet biased um, and it is definitely alcoholic as hell um, is it good? Yes. Is it amazing? Yes. Um, is it the holy grail for an IPA? Probably. I've never had an IPA this strong before. Um, nothing can probably compare to it, and nothing will probably ever even closely match it ever again either. Um, that being said, if you are not an absolute veteran <laughs> as far as IPAs go, or really just alcohol drinking in general, and you find yourself with this beer, my suggestion to you is to buy it because you're probably not going to get that opportunity too often in life and just sit on it. Wait until you have gained a real appreciation for IPAs because if it was my first time coming into it and I started off with a beer like this, I would say that it's way too bitter. This thing actually comes in at 120 IBUs or International Bitterness Units from what I've read. Um, the alcohol, I mean, my chest is on fire right now. Um, so it, it's an experience to be sure, and it's not something to be taken lightly. If you're not really into strong alcohol, really strong hops and bitterness and sweetness, just don't waste the time and money. Just sit on it until you enjoy it or until you appreciate it, that type of beer, and then crack it open because, um, <laughs> Truthfully, it's a beer that demands respect and um, is not joking around at all. I've never had anything like this before. Like, even still, my throat and chest are very hot um, from the amount of alcohol in this. But it's good. I could tell you that it gets a 10 out of 10, um, but 
I almost think it's not even fair to rate this as a beer because it is just in its entire own galaxy. It is something special between a beer and a brandy that is probably only matched by a couple of other brews in the entire world like Samuel Adams' Utopius, Sink the Bismarck, um, Brewmeister's Armageddon beer, those beers that get up into like, you know, the 20, 30, 40 percent marks where it's ridiculous. Something special that's only shared with a couple of other brews in, in the land um, would be this type of beer. So, as an IPA though, I mean, I have to give it a 10. It's it's amazing. It's not something I could drink every day though. Um, I don't think anyone probably could. I literally am already feeling a very mild buzz just from drinking, you know, maybe a fourth of this glass so far. And here's what you have to realize. Regular blended whiskeys like Jack Daniels, Crown Royal, Jim Beam, Maker's Mark, and the like, those are 40% alcohol by volume. This beer is roughly 20% alcohol by volume. So you take this bottle, you cut it in half, and just imagine drinking this much straight whiskey. And not only are you getting that much alcohol, but it is being delivered into your bloodstream, your system, your brain much quicker because of those carbonation bubbles. Those act as such an efficient vehicle to deliver that alcohol that you're going to feel it much quicker than you ever will, even downing straight liquor. So don't plan to go anywhere <laughs> or drive anywhere if you're planning on drinking even a slightly significant amount of this beer. That being said, that has been my review of Dogfish Head's legendary 120-minute Imperial IPA. If you find it, get it. Just get it, hold on to it, even if you don't like IPAs, get it, and use it to trade for um, a massive amount of beer, because it's something that's just very rare and sought after. It's not shipped out to every state either. Some places they can't get it because the ABV is too high, and it's not um, legally allowed to sell a beer because it's considered as a um, liquor stamped item, and so they can't get it there. So just hold on to it. Um, like I said, I have two more in my cellar, and I'm probably not going to touch those for a very long time. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the review, as always, and stay tuned for the next one.